So today we once again gonna go through some Seth Godin's blog posts and maybe something else, maybe something philosophical, maybe something in that uh, kind of spectrum. And I really am looking forward to that because I am really in the mindset of providing something, doing something, making something, creating something that is hopefully gonna change something in your world. And yeah, with that being said, I'm hopefully gonna see you the next time. No. Yeah, with that being said, let's actually fucking start. And that's a bit loud, I guess. But anyway, um, let's see. Let's see what we're having there. I'm still actually not that happy with the background that we're now having on the on the video. But it is what it is. Until further notice, which is the latest one of his blog posts. Of course, every rule, every announcement and every policy is in place until further notice. We say it as a form of throat clearing, a way to make the announcement seem more official and specific. We, we repeat the redundant as a form of gift wrap, a way to be sure that it feels both urgent and impersonal. May I have your attention please, is another wasted phrase that is actually self concelling on inspection. In this case, it acknowledges that attention, that attention is being taken whether you want to loan it out or not. This patina of bureaucratic civility exists to let the uh, bureaucrat off the hook to let the bureaucrat off the hook, but it also is a signal to the listener that an official is speaking up. We should use it or not use it with full knowledge of the signal we are sending. It's the seatbelt training video, the do not remove tag on your mattress, the your call is important filler and <laughs> on hold and the ritual of singing a not very good song to people we care about every single year. If you look around the, if you look around the built world, you'll find these tropes and filigrees just about everywhere. As media changes, we stripe away the old ones and invent new ones to fill their spot. Use them or not as a way of sending a message of awareness and authority. I absolutely love that. I love what he was saying and writing, therefore, because it is just totally the case. You know, we um, we often are not really aware of the things that we are communicating, which is a pretty huge fucking thing, because it is either going to lead or it's either leading already to pretty bad outcomes for you and or pretty good outcomes, you know, but you can't replicate it just because you don't know and don't think about it and whatnot in both just areas of the spectrum. Like it could be something bad or you could be communicating something bad and or something good. And and yeah, and you try to do something good, but you can't do it just because you haven't thought about it. Anyway, um, communication is such an incredibly important aspect of life quite and um of marketing per se as well whatever the fuck you're doing communication is always gonna make a difference it's always gonna it's always gonna be important no matter fucking what it is always gonna be important why you may ask yeah you know because we are always communicating you know we cannot not communicate as Watzlawick said i think was it Watzl Watzlawick? i think he was but I'm actually a little bit unsure. But anyway, let's see the right answer. I think I've went through it already, so I'm gonna just skip a few. Second cousins. Being smart often has little to do with being per... Oh, no. A theater of dominance, launches and orbits. Let's see. The launch is fraught. It takes a lot of energy to get the thing started and the orbit is the goal. There are still satellites up there circling decades after launching. Even after 20 of them, what even after 20 of them, a book launch feels uncertain. After all, you're asking people to add one more thing to their reading list, something that no one has read yet. It is an act of trust and kindness and support that still don't that I still don't take for granted. Thank you. Launches are often characterized by a rush, a series of shortcuts, and not enough patience. But it turns out that a successful launch often takes years because the leaps we ask people to take require trust and confidence. When I look down the list of people who pre-ordered, who supported the multi-pack, who read the blog, who spread the word, who took the workshop, who shared their ideas, who lent their voices, who asked good questions, who believed, I'm overwhelmed. Thank you. The practice launched a week ago, only a week. For many of us, it feels like months ago. It was one of my most successful book launches, hitting number one in its categories and getting a great response from readers. 
I have had or appeared on some terrific podcasts, you can listen to them or some of them here and even work with thousands of you in a workshop setting. The work you ship, the practice you engage in, your own cycle of launches and orbits, it creates our cultures and makes things better. I'm grateful for your attention and for the ability to do this work with you. Also, today at 3.30 East, it will, I'll, be taking, I'll be talking with my friend and colleague, colleague Bernard Jiva, live on various social media channels. Find us here. She'll be talking about how the stories we tell change the world, taking our questions and inviting you to, stick, to check out the latest iteration of the story skills workshops. And by the way, just a... Uh, it's already worth and or it has been already worth for me to go through that. Um, the stories that we're telling ourselves, they change our life. Eventually or in the end. Um, why? Because they do. You know, because when you're talking to yourself and when you're talking to yourself in a negative way and you... Tell yourself some stories about yourself, about your life, about your friends, about whatever the fuck it might be about. Um, you are creating the picture. You are creating your world with your thoughts. You know, ultimately, just in theory, if you really truly believe that you are the best whatever in the world, then you are the best whatever in the world. It is just the case. No matter fucking what, but it is fucking work and it is really difficult to do so, you know, because there is outside forces, there is outside voices, there is a lot of things that tell us, no, you aren't the best, you aren't good enough, you aren't this, you aren't that, but yeah, you know, the stories that we are telling to ourselves as well, they do matter and they do can change certain things. One difference between science and art if you can't replicate the work and get the same outcome, then it's not science. If you can replicate the work and get the same outcome, it's not art. And I think it is amazing, which means that repainting the Mona Lisa is not art. It is just science, you know, the science and or the skill of painting. But it's not about, you know, creating something. If you can't replicate the work and get the same outcome, then it's not science. If you can't, well, I think my example was very bad. If you can't replicate the work and get the same outcome. Now, what does it mean by outcome? I mean, hmm, hmm, well, you know, I, I can repaint the Mona Lisa. Is it going to look the same? Probably not. Is it going to be the same? Definitely not. You know, since there's like just multiple layers of whatever and, and yeah, anyway. Principle is inconvenient. A principle is an approach you stick with even if you know it might lead to a short-term outcome you don't prefer, especially then. It's this gap between the short-term and the long-term that makes a principle valuable. If your guiding principle is to do whatever benefits you right now, you don't have principles of much value. <laughs> but it's the valuable principles that pay off because they enable forward motion, particularly when it feels like there are few alternatives. We embrace a culture based on principles because it's that, uh, it's that structure and mon uh, momentum that enables connection and progress to happen in the first place. Habits, rules, and principles really do make sense, you know. Um, I, I think there is also a problem, though, with having too many principles and or principles that are just not leading to any good outcomes. I, I mean, he was also talking about the value of these principles and or the... Um, what did he exactly say? Well, principles of much value. Well, the value of principles. Is the principle that you're having of high value? You know, is it any good? And this is then really something we have to be honest about to ourselves and also maybe to the people that we're talking to. Because quite often it's probably not going to be the case, you know. Probably it's it's like, okay, this is a principle and I've had it for just many, many years. But it is still not good for me quite you know it's it's still not letting me benefit of of anything and so why am i having this principle you know maybe also the principle of maybe i'm just mixing it up with repeating things but the principle of living your life in a certain way that is over and over leading to bad outcomes you know which then does not make any sense to be honest but yeah 
uh, and a pony at your birthday party. Do you remember your first birthday party? That's pretty unlikely, even if you have pictures to remind you. So what's all the hoopla for? Why the cake against the pony and the rest? It's pretty, clear, it's pretty clear that it wasn't for you. It was for your parents and their circle of supporters and friends. A read of passage, or passage and thanks and relief all in one. Many of the interactions we have that are ostensibly for us are actually for other people. Once we can see who it's for, it's a lot easier to do it well. What does ostensibly mean? I don't know. Apparently, seemingly. I would say this as well. I can't give an example, but but I think it really does make sense. You know, having this mega amazing birthday party. Hmm. Of course, it's gonna be good for the child, but let's show off to my friends. You know, let's just show them what I'm capable of giving to my child. If this is then really the case, I I actually don't want to say it. You know, because I. I feel like that it is not the right thing to um, to say that people are doing quite, if you know what I mean. Like saying they are without really knowing if they're doing it. If this makes sense, but but yeah, anyway. Um, I think there's just going to be some people that are really truly and, and consciously doing that. Of course, there's going to be way more people that are subconsciously doing that, but anyway. The words matter. Every time we have the floor, we have the chance to create connection or to serve it. We can open up possibility or we can close it. Sometimes we share our answer, our answer, thinking it might be the answer. When it might have been better to ask a generous question instead. Being funny by being cute. What? Being funny by being cutting isn't funny. That's just an excuse. It's hard to take words back and we use so many of them. It's likely that there are some we would prefer to retrieve. Note to self, better do slow down a little instead. Better to slow down a little instead. Yeah, I would say this as well. Slow down, think about whatever you're willing to say and then say it. Um, I'm not that good of a communicator. Uh, a dear friend of mine is, which I think we can also see in his speech, which I think is also the case for or with Seth Godin. He is an amazing communicator which you can definitely see by the way that he is talking. You know, he's talking in such a such a clean and clear way, you know, as well as Gary Vee, by the way, is doing it. it. It's amazing. It's just amazing. The unspoken questions. Before we make a decision, we wonder about our dreams, our stories, and our needs. Some of the things we wonder about, even if we don't verbalize them to ourselves. So there's a quote-unquote list. What will I tell my friends? What will I tell my boss? What is everyone else doing? Will this make me feel dumb? Is this going for me right now? Is this good for me right now? I'm sorry. Does it help my family? Is it scarce? Does it raise my status? Will this help me be part of a group I care about? Would my mom be proud of me? Will I get blamed? Is there a shortcut? Is it safe? Is it thrilling? How will I feel if they turn, if they run out? Will it make the pain go away? Is it forbidden? And then maybe if we've gotten so many choices, if we if we have got many choices, how much does it cost? Yeah, quite, quite. Even though I think that, you know, I think it depends. Like, uh, if you're really searching for the the lowest cost alternative or the lowest cost thing you can get then you're probably gonna search for it and buy it um but maybe just maybe you're gonna think about well what are people gonna say if they see me using this device this tool this whatever that is very cheap and everybody knows that it is very cheap because it was marketed as something very cheap and just people know it for example um i don't know some uh, no name shoe brand that that we all know and we all know which type of people are wearing them for example am i really going to buy that i'm am i really going to wear these shoes you know what are people going to say and unfortunately we do care about what other people say which uh, just per se is a fucking dumb idea because why it doesn't matter they're living their life if they think about something for a millisecond it doesn't matter of course, it is something different when it is about your friends and your family and whatnot. But even then, it is like, why do we even care so much? 
You know, why do I even care so much as well? The space in between. It's comforting to have a snappy answer or the certainty of knowing not only how it how it is, but how it happened and precisely what happens next. But sometimes we don't know. Actually, quite often we don't know. And in those moments, we are left with our first principles to focus on possibility, on a change we seek to make, on showing up as an even better version of the person we hope to be, especially when it's hard. And then, and in those moments, we are left with our first principles to focus on possibility, on the change we seek to make, on showing up as an even better version of the person we hope to be, especially when it's hard. And the last one. No, this is too long for me. What do you get and what does it cost? No, also too long. Omission, commission and the places in between. If you accidentally leave the gate open and four ages end up destroying ten th a thousand acres of crops, the guilt feels different than if you went and actively burned down the fields, even if the damage is identical. In our society, we treat errors of omission differently from the decision to commit a crime. But there are countless places in between. What if you should have known? What if you could have known but didn't bother to do the work? What if you promised you'd do the work to find a path but then didn't? One reason we hide is that we are afraid of being on the hook, of making a promise we can't keep, of showing up and taking responsibility for our international actions or intentional actions. But as information becomes more widespread and our leverage increases, we have already put ourselves on the hook. Could, should and would not only rhyme, they exist on a continuum. Continuum. Whatever. What does it mean? Because I don't know. Um, a continuous sequence in which adjacent elements are not perceptibly different from each another or each other, but the extremes are quite distinct. A continuum of special education needs the continuum from third world economies. Well, I, I think I see continuum, 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 continuum. Well, anyway, I think I'm going to end the episode there. So I wish you the best health of happiness and all success and also hope that you're going to remind yourself and how you're going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy, basically means just being a nice person and then being remembered as a nice person, which is as well a pretty cool thing. Um, three other questions that I'm having you are why? Are you here? What are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most? These three questions, I hope they're going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea, which is a pretty fucking cool thing. One last thing that I'm going to give you is... What could you essentially say to another person that is indeed going to change their life? Because I totally believe that we all can say something and we all can communicate something that is indeed going to change somebody's life, which is amazing. And yeah, with that being said, um, take care of yourself, your family members and all of your loved ones. And I'm hopefully going to see you the next time. So bye bye. Take care and always stay motherfucking positive. It is about your minds. It is about the stories that you're telling yourself. It is about the thoughts that you're having in your mind. Bye bye.